¿Qué tal chicos? Muy buenas tardes a todos, soy Traxxoms y bienvenidos a un nuevo vídeo de la que parece que va a ser la última actualización mensual que tengamos de Victoria 3 Es decir que va a ser la, el último vídeo de este estilo que haya, eso parece ser, entonces veremos Pero dicen que bueno, que en septiembre y agosto, espero, que va a volver un poco el contenido en el juego Yo entiendo que a partir de la Parodoscon, que es a principios de septiembre, empezaremos ya a tener gameplays, directos eh, adelantos y todo tipo del juego, ¿vale? Pero bueno, vamos a ver este momento. Hello and welcome to our very last monthly update video for Victoria 3. My name is Machi. Perdón. Ahora sí. Hello. And welcome to our very last monthly update video for Victoria 3. So, el tema es que dice very last monthly update, en plan, a la que va a ser la última actualización mensual. Pero puede ser que haya más, ya veremos. My name is Machi, I'm a part of the community team here at Paradox, and today we'll talk about graphics and players' agency. Let's take a sneak peek at the visuals. Ahí se ve algo nuevo, tío. The visual pillars of Victoria 3 center around elegance and uh, very much the hopefulness that the Victorian era brought through industrialization, through invention, and through the people prospering, uh, through the progress being made through the era. These are some of the visual pillars that we're trying to take uh, through all of our uh, different disciplines of the artistic vision of the game. With the interface of the game, especially the UI, uh, we haven't been changing around stuff as much as we have been refining it. And also to make the interface more alive, A ver, pocos botones y grandes, ¿no? As well Al contrario que en Europa. To really ensure that you as the player have something interesting to look at aside from all the El José es muy bonito, eh. Illustrations of the game uh, are sort of a mix between the very prominent artist from the era mixed a bit with sort of the modern techniques that we can use nuevo. for illustrating that. In the map of the game, there are some key things that we have been trying to focus on. Uh, for one, we want to make sure that the visual hierarchy of the map as a whole uh, is something that we put front and center so that you know uh, sort of based Habrá on logro con the con Grecia, chicos. the map. Uh, Típico país que mola, eh, de la época. On top of that, we also have the paper map. Once you zoom out immensely uh, and get to see the world as a whole. Now, in this stage, uh, we really try to ensure that we're presenting you with a full table that makes it feel like you are overlooking a map of the game. Um, alongside that is actual table assets uh, with some nice artifacts and details that really sells the mood of what this table is meant to bring. Characters in the game uh, are very varied. Uh, we have uh, a lot of different cultures that yes, we're covering. Uh, we know that for the future we want to delve more into specific cultures, but uh, for now we have a very broad sense uh, of just what we're trying to cover. Uh, and characters, we want to make sure visually portray not just uh, their role within the strata of society, uh, but also what sort of labor they perform or uh, what sort of alignment they may possess. Uh, so that really creating unique looks and backgrounds for characters of different uh, classes and roles within the game. We also have a bunch of special effects, VFX, uh, that are sprinkled around the game as a whole. Uh, these range from uh, button press inputs to make the buttons feel a bit more impactful when you interact with them to uh, the more environmental ones like sandstorms, snowstorms, rain. Me raya que en cada juego de Paradox la interfaz esté a la izquierda. O sea, está en un sitio distinto. En Crusader Kings 3 está a la derecha, en EU4 arriba, en Imperator a la izquierda, en Victoria 3 a la izquierda también, en Estrellas a la izquierda también. And a lot of other things that makes the world come alive. All in all, we're trying to push the graphics of Victoria 3 in a slightly different direction from uh, other PDS games, uh, but also because we do feel that the the elements that make out the the core features of Victoria are so prominent 
that we want to put a lot of extra effort visually into those elements and therefore create the hierarchy that I mentioned so that you do pay attention to your hubs and that they are not just small and granular, but they are rewarding to look at to a large extent. Considering how much time we are all spending <laughs> on fancy maps, it was very clear to us that for Victoria 3, we really need to do something special, a living map. There are numerous things that we are doing to, do to, do in order to no? make the map uh, not just move, but also feel like it's breathing and uh, progressing with the choices being made. As you expand your hubs, uh, you will see them grow. Uh, it's not a one-to-one -one scale, but rather through certain thresholds. Uh, and our intent there is very much to ensure that we are presenting you with a hub that is uh, symbolizing uh, the growth of your city throughout the different sort of buildings that you can build, whether it be production or residential. As your city and hub progresses, uh, you will also find that there are different levels uh, of the residential buildings depending on the standard of living of your pops in that hub. Uh, and uh, we have for each different culture, three different residential building types that range from the sort of very poor ones to uh, the more uh, fancier ones. Uh, and uh, in showcasing that, we also have effects that tells you when a building is being upgraded so that you have something to look at. When you start expanding your country uh, and building more hubs, the hubs will be connected by roads. Uh, initially, these roads will be populated by just a horse carriage uh, carrying goods around it. Um, but eventually, as you progress, you will be able to upgrade those roads into railroads. Uh, and even well, yeah. beyond that, at certain points, you will get to see uh, anything from old locomotives to electric trains inhabiting uh, the, the roads and railroads of your country. The military system in the game is something that we have put a lot of visual effort into. We will be having uh, units fighting each other uh, when battles do break out. Uh, these will, upon completion, uh, push the war Pero no vamos a ver soldaditos, in favor of the winning party. Uh, and in doing so, uh, battles taking place and ending, you will cause devastation to the surrounding terrain and the state overall that the, the battles are taking place in. Um, devastation in of itself is a modifier and Espero one que that se vean is to the, the terrain, uh, but also trees, rivers, and the buildings of hubs uh, being uh, sort of burnt out, destroyed, uh, and much more dirty uh, than they used to be. We also have various different hubs for resources. Uh, like um, for logging camps, uh, mining, uh, and farms. Uh, all of these are different types of hubs that interact with the terrain and the environment in different ways. Uh, as you expand them, uh, for instance, a logging camp will start chopping down trees, a mining hub will start excavating and making its presence known on the surrounding terrain, and of course, farms will have fields and various things to cultivate and all of this progresses as you expand. In the uh, late game part uh, and throughout research, you'll be able to have Zeppelins research. Now, in order to actually have Zeppelins around the map, you'll be able to build a skyscraper. Skyscrapers function as the sort of anchor points for Zeppelins and will allow them to traverse in between different skyscrapers, uh, giving you not just motion throughout the roads and railroads, but also through the air. As wow. complex as they are, strategy games can have quite steep learning curve. El that's tutorial, why no? a good tutorial okay. comes in handy. Victoria 3's approach to tutorials is a bit different than what you'll find in other strategy games. When designing this system, we had three priorities in mind. First, we wanted to make sure that we were future-proof. Uh, that we would be able to iterate on and expand the mechanics without having to rewrite the tutorial every time. Second, we wanted to make sure that we catered to as many distinct learning styles uh, and prior experience as possible. 
and we didn't want the player to have to assess themselves if they're a novice player or an expert player this player going you. into it. Instead, we wanted you to be able to choose the steps that you take to learn the game yourself once you're in the game. And finally, we didn't want a separate tutorial mode that you had to go through before you could get to the real game. While we do provide a number of suggested countries for you to try out, which all have their different que guapo, and tío. advantages. You Eso más parece un gameplay que hemos tenido momento, eh. Prefer to play as your very first game and learn the game that way. With Victoria 3's learn the game objective. We hope that Chile y el cabo, eh. Suecia, Bélgica, Chile y el cabo. Como países recomendables para el tutorial. And probably the deepest economic experience to date. We really want to show you the game, and so you can understand and and fully experience the game like we want you to. In Wiki, you start a tutorial by selecting "Learn the Game" as your player objective. So we have two main components of our tutorial. So first off, we have the reactive journal system, and these journal entries that appear there are more like challenges for you to engage with, and they appear. Uh, when we think you should learn a specific thing, so they kind of react to what you are doing. With this, we want to show the information that is relevant to the player at this particular time in the game. But the second thing I mentioned was the pop-up walkthroughs, and they are there to deliver you uh, some basic information on where to find things in the UI. They are triggered by the player, and they're quite short, but they're there to teach you how to do a specific thing. Each tutorial journal entry can have two of these pop-up walkthroughs, and we name them Tell Me How and Tell Me Why. The how tells you how you do it and guiding it through the UI and telling you about the, the short relevant information of where to find it. Whilst the why is more extensive and can actually tell you, you know, why are you doing this and what's the purpose and meaning of actually performing this action. But journal entries are not the only place we use this pop-up. It's been done with We do have yeah. game concepts scattered all across this huge game. One example of this is the interest group concept, where you can look at the concept in the tooltip, but then press a, press a guide me button to get a pop-up walkthrough of interest groups and get a, a little, you know, UI explanation and everything to tell you what interest groups are. The nested tooltips where you find these pop-up walkthroughs are not only a part of the tutorial. You can find this in the other game objectives, so you can, as a player, choose when you want to teach yourself these concepts more in detail. We all like challenging ourselves and looking for new ways to enjoy the game. And with optional objectives, we hope to make your experience even objectives more optional. Eh? In some early playtests that we had, we found that the players who enjoyed the game the most were the ones who already knew what they wanted to do going into the game. This is a bit of a challenge for new players because Victoria 3 offers a vast sandbox where you can turn your country into anything you want. With such unlimited choice, often comes a lack of direction. The solution we came up with was that you get to tell us how you want your campaign to progress. When you start your first game, we suggest that you pick Learn the Game as your first objective. The other objectives are there if you need a sense of direction or if you just want to see what they're about. Each objective has a number of journal entries that it will provide or might provide during the course of the campaign, with the completion or failure of some journal entries unlocking subsequent ones. The system is invisible to you as a player until the journal entries arrive. If you're a modder, though, you'll be pleased to know that you can use this system uh, to create entire campaign modes that can be as open-ended or tightly scripted with branching narratives as you like. Player objectives are a way of giving the player an extra choice or challenge at the game start. Or they can just choose sandbox if they don't want to have these challenges enabled during the course of the game. Another purpose of the player objectives is to allow players to test their newfound skills, provided they just completed the tutorial or they want to actually do something that they haven't really thought of before. Say you're starting up a new game and you're not necessarily sure what you want to play as in that game. Well, you can decide, I want to do a player objective because you know that there's a set challenge at the end of the game that you need to complete. 
then you can just go through and either pick one of the selected nations, or maybe in your head already you want to play as a certain nation, you just don't know what you want to do yet. You can still play as that nation and enable an objective. There are five objectives that the player can choose between at game starts. Economic dominance is the first player objective that you can pick after the tutorial. In economic dominance, you focus more on building up the power base of your economy, as well as expanding your national market and incorporating other nations through customs unions or Best out of all, expanding boy. and conquering. With the end goal of the objective being that you can use the same amount of the global GDP inside of your shared markets. The next objective a player can choose between is the hegemon. In the hegemon, the goal is to expand your actual country, whether it be through military, diplomacy, or colonization. With the end goal being that you control a certain portion of the global population, whether through subjects or your actual owned dominion. The final player objective that you can pick is the egalitarian society objective. In this one, it's a lot more focused on the perfectionist nature of your nation. You want to focus on building up your civilian population. You want to make sure that you have your institutions that help your population, whether it's education or workplace safeties in place, so then that you can work on increasing the average standard of living for the majority of your population, as well as having a high education access. Upon completion of the final task of any of the objectives, the player will receive an associated achievement. Tres no los que sacar ya, chicos. A por ello, eh? and directions on how to play the game if they are not entirely certain on how they want to play it themselves. And so, we have reached the end of our very last monthly update video for Victoria This, Albert, nuestro último video de actualización mensual. Que se puede que se refiera al último que han sacado, que es verdad, ¿sabes? Pero... Esto no lo habían dicho nunca, dice el very last, ¿sabes? But don't you worry, because we'll be back later this year. Mira, no os preocupéis porque volveremos este año con a finales de año con retransmisiones en vivo, sesiones de bueno, cosas divertidas, etc. En fin, parece que esta va a ser la última actualización mensual. Tiene pinta, chicos. Poco más que decir. Nos vemos en el siguiente vídeo. Chao, chao.